Hello, my name is Steve. Welcome to SA. In the 1950s, a man and his companions ventured into an unknown underground cave. Because somewhere in the cave was too narrow, the man accidentally got stuck on a raised rock and couldn't move. After some struggles nothing worked. He was trapped 305 meters underground, where the air was thin and the situation was critical. Then, his companions tried to rescue him. Can he get through this difficulty? Next, I will tell you the story. The story takes place in Derbyshire, England, which is located in the middle of England. There are many hills and limestone caves here. The largest national park in the UK, the Peak District National Park, is located here. In the heart of the national park lies a village called Castleton. There are pleasant scenery and quiet environment, there are many ancient castles and underground caves, attracting many tourists every year. In addition, there are some professional cave explorers who are deeply attracted by the unknown underground caves here. The protagonist of the story is named Neil Moss, who was born in July 1938, when he was 20 years old. Neil is smart, studious, and his father is a company executive and the family is very wealthy. After graduating from high school, Neil was admitted to Balliol College, Oxford, which is one of the oldest colleges at Oxford University, and many British Prime Ministers graduated from the college. Neil is a warm and cheerful person with a big hobby, like spelunking. To this end, he joined the caving group of the British Cave Association, many of which have rich experience in caving. Neil followed the seniors into various underground caves many times. During the expedition, they encountered some hardships, but they all turned their backs on it. In the spring of 1959, a group of eight people from the cave team planned to explore an unknown passage in a cave. The cave, called Peak Cavern, is one of the most famous in the UK and is located just southwest of Castleton. This is a natural limestone cave with only one trail leading to it, alongside canyons and rivers. The entrance to the cave is wide and there are many abandoned houses inside. It was built by the last caveman in England. This is a schematic diagram of the entrance to the cave in the mountain. Here is the entrance to the cave. There are rivers and two passages inside. The passages inside can lead to the deepest part of the cave. Some of the passages are small and some places need to crawl slowly to pass. These two caves are usually closed to the public, and explorers need to apply for approval to enter. This is a schematic diagram of the cave after the passage. Here is the location of the access port. This passage is called the upper gallery, where the space is relatively spacious, and people can walk upright in it. It is called Pickering Passage, and it has a total length of 250 meters and has a small interior space that requires crawls to pass. After passing here, you will come to a relatively spacious space where there is a fork. The passage on the left is called the Cohesion Crawl. Walking from here will eventually lead to a place called Cohesion Sump, which is an underground river. The passage on the right is called the Eye Hole, which is relatively wider than the passage on the left. Walking here will lead to a place called Stalagmite Room. The Stalagmite Room has a large interior space, and along this road will eventually reach a place called Anniversary Hall, which is also the deepest part of the Peak Cavern's proven area. In 1586, William Camden, a famous British paleontologist and historian, described Peak Cavern in his book. He wrote this, There is a cave in the ground called the Devil's Butt, which opens its mouth and contains many turns and repetitions of rooms. Rivers and streams flow here, as well as huge stagnant pools. The locals call the river formed by the water flowing from the cave as the inner Styx. Peak Cavern is also considered one of the wonders of England. The location that Neil and his party want to explore is in the stalagmite room in Peak Cavern. However, Neil was accidentally trapped during the expedition. What happened that day? Can Neil get out of trouble? Next, we put the time back to March 22, 1959. 
March 22, 1959, was a Sunday. It was spring in Derbyshire in March, and the light rain continued, and the sky was misty. Neil, 20, arrived at the entrance to Peak Cavern in Castleton with seven other mates early in the morning. After finishing their gear, they entered the cave and came to a passage called the Upper Gallery. Then they entered the Pickering Passage, a narrow entrance where only one person could pass at a time. Eight of them entered the passage one by one and crawled forward with difficulty. Not only is there no light source in the tunnel, it is very humid, and there is a lot of mud. They could only see ahead through the searchlights above their heads. After a period of crawling, they came to a relatively large space, where eight people took a short rest. They then proceeded towards the passage, called the Eye Hole. The road in front of this passage is relatively open, and the deeper the passage is, the narrower it becomes. The narrowest part is only 30 centimeters wide. They had to push hard to get through. The eight people successfully passed the eye hole and came to the entrance of the stalagmite room. The entrance of the stalagmite room is not large and is accompanied by standing water. To enter the stalagmite room, you have to wade through the water. This is a schematic of the interior of the stalagmite room. Here is the entrance. There is a 45 degree slope inside. There is a passage above the slope that leads to the deepest anniversary hall. There is also a passage in the middle of the slope. This is a new passage discovered just a month ago by a private exploration team. It's not completely straight down, it has a curved part in the middle, kind of like a wine corkscrew. The vertical part above the channel is 3.6 meters, the curved part is 3 meters, the vertical part below is 5.4 meters, and the total length of the channel is 12 meters. The destination of the trip of eight people is to explore this passage again. Neil and his group entered the stalagmite room one after another. There are a large number of stalactites on the top of the cave and on the rock wall, and the scenery was beautiful. Their location at this time is 305 meters underground, 800 meters from the entrance to the cave. Then they came to the passageway in the middle of the slope, and the entrance was very narrow. The roof of the stalagmite room has been dripping with water. This water flows down the slopes deeper into the cave, which makes the walls of the passage very slippery. Not only that, there is also a lot of mud inside. For safety reasons, a group of eight people put a 23-meter long rope ladder into the passage. After finishing the preparations, Neil volunteered and became the first person to explore the passage. At 3.30 in the afternoon, Neil slowly entered the passage through the rope ladder. The wall was slippery, and he had to be extra careful. As he was about to reach the bend in the passage, a raised rock stuck his stomach, blocking his way down. The passage he is currently in is only 45 centimeters wide, and the rock bump takes up most of the space. Neil tried to break the rock apart with his hands, but the rock seemed to merge with the wall and couldn't move no matter what. Then Neil thought of a way, and he planned to force it down. So he took a deep breath to make his abdomen smaller, and squeezed down hard. His abdomen passed smoothly. But as he continued down, he found his shoulders caught in the rock. Neil continued to squeeze down, and his shoulders moved down a few centimeters with the force of gravity. He managed to squeeze through the area, but Neil noticed that the rope ladder below seemed to be stuck, piling up in the bend of the passage. The experience just now also made Neil consume a lot of physical strength. He didn't have the strength to organize the rope ladder, so he wanted to return to the entrance to rest. However, it is easy to get in and not for out. When he tried to pass the raised rock just now, he found a serious problem. Because the rock wall inside the passage is slippery, he was able to pass by his own gravity when he going down. Now that he want to go up, there is no place to borrow force inside the passage, so he can't force it up. However, Neil couldn't handle that much, he tried his best to squeeze up. But the rock caught Neil's shoulder so tightly again that he couldn't move. Neil shouted loudly to his companion, I'm stuck. I can't move positions. 
The companions at the entrance of the passage immediately looked into the passage after hearing the shout. At this point they saw Neil's face, who was still struggling. Neil's head-mounted searchlight accidentally fell off during the struggle just now, and his surroundings became pitch black. The friends didn't think it was a big problem at first after seeing it. They lowered a rope down the tunnel, and Neil struggled to tie the rope to his chest. Then the seven of them pulled the rope up at the entrance of the passage. Neil would also twist his body in tandem, trying to squeeze his shoulders over the raised rock. The seven people at the entrance underestimated Neil's weight, and the ropes they brought were not very strong. The rope broke after a few rubs against the rock. After that, they tried several times with new ropes, all of which ended in broken ropes. Neil, who was stuck after the rescue failed, panicked. He kept talking to his companions and hoped that they would save him quickly. Neil tried his best but still couldn't get past the bump. At this time, it was still raining lightly outside the cave, and the inside of the cave was very humid, and the water continued to flow down the rock wall. This made the rope ladder Neil's grip on become slippery and slippery. Perhaps because he was too nervous, Neil suddenly slipped and couldn't grasp the rope ladder, and he fell into the bend below. It was an oval space, only 26 centimeters wide, and Neil fell to the bend and didn't continue to fall. Then he tried to climb up on the rope ladder. But the space here is too small, and he can't bend his legs at all. Seeing this, the partners at the entrance immediately pulled up the rope ladder, trying to use the rope ladder to pull Neil up. But the rope ladder only went up a few centimeters and then seemed to be stuck with something again. Neil immediately climbed a step up to the original raised position while his legs could bend a little. Then he pushed upwards, try to squeeze through the raised rock. But then something unexpected happened. Neil's shoulder was firmly stuck by the rock, even tighter than before, unable to move at all. The eight of them are in a cave 305 meters underground, where the oxygen content is low, and the team tried to rescue for four hours without success. Due to the strenuous exercise just now, several people have begun to experience hypoxia. Suddenly, the buddies at the entrance of the cave heard that Neil and the passage seemed to be saying some strange things. Neil told everyone not to save him, and let everyone go to dinner, and so on. They knew that Neil might have become a little delirious from the lack of oxygen and fear. Realizing that they alone couldn't get Neil up, they returned to the cave for official rescue. The RAF Mountain Rescue Team was the first to arrive at Peak Cavern after receiving a rescue request, and came to the location of the stalagmite room. In order to rescue, they moved quickly, which caused several rescuers to suffer from hypoxia as soon as they arrived in the stalagmite room. Even so, they risked their way to the passageway where Neil was trapped. At this time, Neil was in a coma due to lack of oxygen, and the situation was very critical. Several rescuers entered the passage one after another to confirm Neil's current condition but they misestimated the oxygen content in the channel. After three rescuers entered the passage, they fell into a coma due to lack of oxygen before reaching Neil's position. Therefore, the rescue team could only rescue the three comatose people first. After research, the rescue team decided to increase some oxygen content in the cave first and then carry out the rescue. After Neil was trapped for nine and a half hours, Rescue teams brought in a shipment of oxygen cylinders from a nearby hospital. It was late at night, and it was pitch black outside Peak Cavern. The trail leading to the entrance to Peak Cavern is a bit dangerous, and there is a river below that can fall into the river if you are not careful. Dozens of rescuers relayed oxygen cylinders into the cave, and everyone was covered in mud. At the same time, John Carter, a doctor from the RAF Mountain Rescue Team, came to the stalagmite room, and after reaching the passage, he asked to open the oxygen cylinder. With the increase of ambient oxygen, Neil, who was in a coma, gradually woke up, and the doctor believed that his state was not optimistic at this time. His speech was slurred and he was unable to cooperate with rescuers twisting his body. Since Neil is stuck vertically in the tunnel, 
Dr. Carter wants to descend to the trapped position to give him some food and water. However, before he could reach Neil's place, Dr. Carter had to retreat to the entrance due to breathing difficulties. At this time, the oxygen content in the channel is still not high. In order to keep Neil's life safe, the rescue team planned to put an oxygen mask directly on Neil's head. Only three of all rescuers currently entering the stalagmite room and barely make it through the passage. Putting the mask on Neil's head required rescuers to go head down into the tunnel, a condition that can cause the brain to become engorged. It is very dangerous to maintain this position for a long time, not to mention that it is a big test for rescuers in the case of low oxygen content. Two rescuers then entered, but passed out shortly after. Everyone pinned their hopes on the last rescuer, Ron Peters, who was 25 years old. Ron headed down the tunnel and touched Neil's shoulder, but then he started gasping for breath. The companions at the entrance saw that something was wrong and quickly pulled him up. After a short rest, Ron said to his companions, let me do it again. Then Ron entered the tunnel again, struggling to get to where Neil was and putting the oxygen mask on his head. Not only that, he also tied a strong rope to Neil's chest. Neil was already unconscious, and it was impossible for him to cooperate. Then the man above pulled on the rope and Neil managed to move up a short distance, but then his shoulders got stuck again. He was having difficulty breathing because the rope was tightly gripping his chest. Ron had to go down again and untie Neil's chest to keep him safe. Hundreds of people gathered at the entrance of Peak Cavern as news spread. Neil's father also rushed over, and he promised rescuers that if Neil could be rescued, he would provide a generous payment. However, the cave is full of unknown situations, and very few people can reach the trapped position, let alone rescue him. The current situation is that Neil is stuck on a raised rock and cannot move, and the ropes cannot pull him up. There was an offer to break the rock that was holding Neil up and free him. However, the actual situation is that the space inside the channel is very small, and some devices cannot be brought in. In addition, if they want to start work, they must enter their head down, and no one can work in this position for a long time. Rescuers had actually tried to break the rock, but it was too hard to break with ordinary tools. The passage where Neil was trapped was in the middle of the slope, and the entire slope was at a 45-degree angle. It was also suggested that a tunnel could be dug under the slope to reach Neil's location and rescue him. But rescuers found that the rock inside the cave was very hard and difficult to cut. And large equipment cannot be brought in, so it can only be excavated manually. If that's the case, it would take a lot of time, and Neil wouldn't last that long. As time passed, Dr. Carter brought an air purifying device into the stalagmite room. He injected oxygen into the channel by compressing the cylinder, replacing the air in the channel to ensure the oxygen needed for Neil to breathe. Rescuers also put a rope with a hook into the passage and hooked Neil's pants. They tried to lift one of Neil's feet, only to get stuck again, and the rescue operation had to pause. In desperation, another suggestion was made. Since the rock can't be broken, Neil's collarbone can be broken so that Neil can be pulled up from the passage. This method is very dangerous, Neil will suffer unbearable pain in the process, and if he makes a mistake, he will die immediately. Even if he was rescued this way, Neil could have lost both of his arms. But now the situation is so urgent that they can't think of a better way, so they decided to do it. At this time, the rescuer Ron was exhausted because he entered the passage many times, and he was unable to complete the task. At present, the rescue team urgently needs a person who has rescue experience and is thin and strong to enter the channel to complete the task. Then local radio stations started broadcasting the request, and they called on those who fit the bill to help. An 18-year-old girl named June Bailey got the news and came to the cave entrance. Small and athletic, she asked to participate in the rescue. The rescue team agreed when they saw that she was eligible. Bailey then followed the other rescuers to the stalagmite room. At this time, Neil was slightly more awake than before. 
Bailey entered the passage with a crowbar, and she comforted Neil and told him the rescue plan. Neil didn't answer but looked at Bailey silently. Then, Bailey got into action. She put a rope on Neil and tapped Neil's collarbone with a crowbar. Due to the small space inside the passage, she was unable to exert force and could only hit the same position again and again. The intense pain made Neil howl. At this time, the people at the entrance of the passage also cooperated with pulling the rope. But Neil couldn't bear the pain any longer, and he passed out. Seeing this, Bailey immediately asked to stop pulling the rope. Bailey then tried again, but the collarbone was too hard to break. The rescue plan was unsuccessful after six hours of effort. At this point, Neil had been trapped underground for more than 20 hours, and rescuers could still hear Neil's faint breathing. But they don't have much time left. The rain flowed into the channel along with the mud, and the ladder and ropes in the channel were also slowly submerged by the mud. All of them were almost covered with mud. To make matters worse, one of Neil's hands was tangled in the rope ladder and couldn't move. Suddenly, there was thunder outside the cave, and the sky started pouring rain, and the rain continued to pour into the cave. Some lower areas within Peak Cavern have been flooded by rain. Taking into account safety issues, the rescue team decided to temporarily give up the rescue and try to find a way when the rain subsides. After a few hours, the heavy rain in the sky slowly turned into light rain. Rescuers came to the stalagmite room again. All were heartbroken when they reached the passage. They saw that the passage was full of muddy water, and Neil was completely submerged. Then they began to drain all the muddy water, but they knew it didn't work for Neil anymore. At 3 a.m. on the third day of being trapped, doctors confirmed that Neil had no vital signs. Neil's father had been at the entrance of the cave, but Neil never came back. He was very distressed after getting the news. Taking into account the safety of the rescuers, he hoped that the rescue team would keep Neil in the cave and no more people would risk it. The rescue team agreed to Neil's father's request, and they closed the passage in the cave with loose rocks, where Neil would be buried forever. The stalagmite room was renamed the Moss Chamber in honor of Neil Moss. Although they failed to rescue Neil in this rescue operation, some rescuers were also praised by the people for their bravery to save people during the rescue. Today, Peak Cavern is in commercial operation, and the entrance has been developed as a venue for concert performances. It has since been converted into a movie theater, which can accommodate hundreds of people watching movies at the same time. Peak Cavern attracts hundreds of thousands of tourists every year. Some of them may know that a young cave explorer and a large number of rescuers had such an earth-shattering story here more than half a century ago.